All right, it's time to replace some exhaust valves on this right hand cylinder head. So this is the cracked one. We'll start with that one and we'll do two, three, four tools you'll need. I love this Lyle uh, 36050 valve spring remover. So we'll use this one. It's a two piece tool. To remove the valves, you just put this over the keepers, tap it with a hammer, the keepers will come out, take the valve out, replace it, and then we'll also lap it in with the, with some lapping paste. And hopefully this goes smoothly, then we have to put everything back together. It's going to take a while. Alright, so before starting, you just want to put some support under these valves obviously take out the spark plugs because you want the valve to be supported against the surface so the stem doesn't go down when we try to remove these keepers let's give it a whack easy as that the magnetic tool gets your keepers and your valve retainer Sweet. I definitely have a place to put all that. And there's a spring. Finally, our defective exhaust valve. Make sure the valve guide itself is not protruded. It looks okay. So there it is. I mean that's that's pretty bad. <laughs> Looks okay the other way around. It's just that one spot. I don't know how this happens. Put it in the comments below. What's the root cause of this? Because all the other valves seem to be okay. Alright, so we'll take our brand new exhaust valve. Make sure it's the exact same length of valve stem. It looks identical. And take some of this vintage valve lapping paste. I'll use the fine. You just need a dab. Put it on the interface. Put in here and then just use a dowel with a rubber tip. And just lap it in. And you'll hear that it gets smoother and smoother. And what you want to do is inspect all the way around to make sure that seat is nice and clean and even. Let's wipe that off. beautiful. So that's it. Let's put this valve back in and do the other three since we're already here. Okay, so to install the valve, you want to make sure it's nice and happy and seated all the way in. It's definitely happy. Let's flip it over. Put our cushion right under that. Valve spring back on. Keep 
keep her back on. Might want some needle nose pliers to get those out. So put both of the little keepers back in here so they're aligned with the stem. Now we'll use this part of the tool with a little spring loaded tip, center like that, and just give it a good whack. <clears throat> Boom, you're in. And you can make sure that valve doesn't go anywhere. Done. Now to the next one. I love this tool. <laughs> it makes everything so easy. Here's valve number two out of cylinder number one. Take a look at the ceiling surface. I mean, this actually, this one actually looks pretty bad as well. You can see that the seat is all rough and pitted. I don't know why. Looks pretty bad. <laughs> I mean the seat in the head it looks just fine but the exhaust valve it's almost like it's corroded good thing we're replacing these all these exhaust valves now you might ask shouldn't you, you do the same for the other side of the engine yeah but the customers like two grand is my budget so like well we're just doing we're just getting it running well and you'll go from there all right just rinse and repeat with the other three valves when you use so little of this paste that's why it lasts for decades <laughs> one little can I've done many valves with this method and it works great. Taught by a old school motorcycle racer who actually gave me this paste back in the early 2000s. All right, let's slap this sucker in here. Alright, seat looks perfect, nice and even, so we'll reinstall this one. So for cylinder number three, here's the first valve. Yeah, I mean, they all look, the seats are just pitted. And if the seat doesn't have a good contact with the head, you know, with the valve seat in here, 
the heat transfer is worse and the valve just overheats and that's probably what caused it to fail. Just for reference here is the second exhaust valve from cylinder number three. It looks you know one of the worst ones. You see there's like a little dimple right here where it was probably going to do the same thing as the crack valve. It's just starting to deform right there. You see that little dimple? Right here. Ugh. So it looks like the uh, head gasket from Felpro, this is the original, two layer steel with a little, a little sealant around. The Felpro one looks identical, so perhaps Subaru hired Felpro to make their gaskets because apparently they couldn't do a good job on their own. If you remember on the older 2.5s with the single layer steel gasket with that black crap around there. They just leak around 100,000 miles. And Felpro came up with a multi-layer steel version upgraded kit. Never had a comeback with those. Um, before bolting on the head, we've got the head bolts in there ready to go. The instructions say you want to put a little dab of sealant on each corner here to prevent oil leaks at this interface between the engine block, the head, and the timing cover. That's standard procedure so we'll put a little dab on both sides of the gasket and then slap this head back together. Alright here we go. Alright, now let's follow the OEM torquing procedure minus the angles. We'll just finish at 90 foot pounds. So the instructions say first tighten to 21 foot pounds in that order, then go to 73 foot pounds, then loosen everything, then go to 31 foot pounds. And then do the uh, 80 degrees for all of them, then 75 for the middle ones, and 30 for the outer ones. Okay. I think we can just go for it. This is to pre stress the bolts, um, not necessarily like crush the gasket and release the gasket. So. Let's go to, just go evenly, go to 50, 70, and 90. Alright, so I'm at 50 foot-pounds, and you can see the marks we made is actually a good thing. Less than a quarter turn to go on all the bolts, they're nice and even. So let's go to 70, and then 90. And no, you don't need a super fancy digital torque wrench. I got this thing probably 10 years ago at Pep Boys or something, and it's it's fine as long as it's consistent all right so so this is 70 foot pounds and that's almost at the top
All right, so final pass here. The middle ones, I'm going to torque to 90. And the outer ones, I think 80 is fine. Okay. And our black mark is just about at the top. for the rest of them. Plenty, plenty tight. number six get a nice workout perfect so now it's gonna be the tricky part putting on this cam carrier putting in the rocker arms while it's halfway on there keep in mind you gotta put the sealant on you can't waste too much time because it's gonna eventually dry